I'm not pulling my driveway. We all know what that means. It's time for the Drive to Work Coronavirus Edition. So using my time at home to do interviews with people past and present, and I have someone today that is both past and present. Uh, I have Bill Rose, uh, currently the VP of R&D, but way back in time, the head designer and head developer of Mirage. Hey, Bill. Hello. How are you? <laughs> There's not a lot of sets in Magic, by the way, that the same person led the, the first part of it and led the second part of it. That is, that is true. I mean, it's actually uh, a vision of Richard's and one that I adopted pretty early. Um, we, we separate. We, we force people who have designed not to lead the set or vice versa. Um, but, we, you know, back in the day, Mark, when there were only like four of us doing everything, um, you know, we, we all worked on all products back. That was 95? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, when we when we first, you and I first started, like, there were four of us and every development team was us. We were every, there was no who was this development team, it was us. So let's, so, so Mirage's origins predate, pre, predate you being a wizard. So let's go back to the very beginning of how yeah, did Mirage start? Mirage, we started working on Mirage before Magic was officially released in 93. Okay. So we're, we were original play testers with Richard Garfield and working on the game. And Richard had this idea of expansions. And I, I had a group uh, who worked on Mirage while there was another group that worked on Ice Age. They were both basically designed uh, nearly similar times, though um, the Ice Age and Mirage, the Ice Age designers and the Mirage designers sort of strategically went in different directions. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, we were 93 we started, I think. Okay, so your team, so Men I believe Menagerie, right, was its code name at the time. Menagerie was it. I say 93, I think it was 92 when we started. Okay. Like, actually working on the set. Like, we started before Magic was published. And I believe, so your the, your team was, R Richard had uh, met you guys at a bridge club, right? Is that where your, your team met Richard? Yeah, uh, yes. Well, we met, uh, we had, we had friends that were connected, but Richard played, the first time I met Richard is I had a good friend who was also a good friend of Richard's and I didn't know Richard and Richard came to a bridge club that I was playing. And that's like the first time that I met Richard. So that would be our connection. Yes. Okay. So and then we just started playing game. Like then we started blowing off school and playing games. <laughs> <laughs> um, who said playing games can't help you with your career? So <laughs> yeah, it did not help me with my GPA, but it helped <laughs> me with my career. Okay. So let's go to early, early days of menagerie. So what, where did you guys start from? Like, what, what what was your starting point for making the set? Well, back then, um, so the original vision was Richard would come out with what was Alpha, and then that whole set would be retired, and we would come out with another set. Um, and that the idea was that the, the next set would be like 50% new and 50% old, kind of like what we used to do with core sets. Like, so people would just throw, you know, Richard almost was like, well, people just throw away their old cards and won't do the new cards. And so Ice Age really had embraced, embraced that 50-50 model when they were in design. And the Menagerie was a little bit different. Well, of course, after Magic was released, very quickly, Richard and Peter came back and said, nobody's throwing away any cards. Just, <laughs> it's going to be all new. Um, but it was really started there where we had, a, you know, we, we would we would keep older cards and then that influence like we always had giant growth and lightning bolt and there were a lot of you know sort of those staple cards um so this the, the, the set like started out it was like half alpha and half new and then over time just morphed more and more and more new more and more and more new the 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 one thing i'd say that we did that was differently and you can tell like now, if, a new, if, if somebody who's new, newer to Magic goes back and plays Mirage, it's, uh, it's, it's not a draft experience to today's standards. But when Mirage came out, it was like the best draft experience. And that's what we, like we were more creature heavy. We, we really designed uh, 
Mirage from Menagerie, what it was called at the time, to be a great set to draft. Yeah, that's... We love loved love drafting right historically speaking one of, i mean mirage did a bunch of things but one of the things that mirage really put on the map was the idea of limited as an important part of the game before that yeah. like we didn't really design the set to be played in limited if anyone's ever played ice age limited it, it was not designed to be played in limited <laughs> it was, ice age was not designed but no no i mean you had a collection of cards therefore you could play it limited but um you know, every now and then a 1-1 one, one went the distance. And it was like, okay, <laughs> how'd you die? Well, he played 1-1. One, one. I didn't have any creatures, so I lost. <laughs> okay, so how early the sort of African theme, was that earlier or did that come later? No, that was later. Um, uh, an, an, an art director, Suzanne Harkey. I hope I got the name right. Yeah, I'm Suzanne Harkey. That's right. Came, right, remember? And yeah. she, I remember, uh, back in then, like, now we design where the theme of the set and the design sort of happened at the same time and they're melded together. But, but I mean, you know this, back, back in the day, like, we designed a set and then we were like, let's choose a setting and an art, right? Um, and so I remember Suzanne coming and saying, like, I want to do this theme and we were like, okay, seems cool. And then we moved forward with it. So when Menagerie came in, it was it was like generic D and D ish um alpha art. So we 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 did not we 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 that was something that wizards added and then we just embraced. Okay, so let, let's talk mechanics then. So the set had two me named mechanics, uh flanking and phasing. So what what, what do you want to start with? Wanna start with flanking or start with phasing? <laughs> Wait, which came for which came first i don't know <laughs> phasing had the hard the hard um i'm not sure which came first flanking came like we were doing more creature oriented and we wanted to add you know a a, a creature mechanic um and there was a point where i think where flank, flanking came about there was a point in design where we we had a lot of three three creatures and the games weren't really fast. So what would happen was like it just there was no real reason to play with anything smaller than three three. You just you the 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 small the small creature strategy just didn't work. Um and we were like, okay, how do we how do we balance it out? And this is where we sort of came flanking. It came from, from my experience with wargaming of just like, you know, you just kind of you know, you imagine these like medieval armies and the medieval knights and the, you know, the cavalry sort of went around the side. Um, and it and it really it started balancing our experience because now these two twos could both defend against, you know, two twos can gang up and defend against the three three and they could also go off and attack. Real quickly for the um, audience that doesn't have flanking, I, just, I realize we're talking about old mechanics here. Uh, flanking oh, was a mechanic that said when you attack with a flanker. If you were blocked by any creature that itself didn't have flanking, it got minus one, minus one. Right. Um, and it kind of worked like, like, like conceptually, it was like, oh, like I have this creature on horseback. And if you're blocking with another creature you know, on horseback, that's fine. But if you're blocking with like your giant ogre, they're going to be slow. And, and, you know, it's more of like a mini. I mean, it's almost like a minis game type of thing. Yeah. And the flavor, um, the flavor was they were on horseback, which. Not everybody got. Right. I, I bring that up from time to time. They're like, "Oh, I I didn't realize that." But if you go look at the art, I mean, they're always on horse. Or there is one centaur who is a horse, I guess. But <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, right. So it was like you know, like right. It was your mobile army of the small army. Um, and then with with phasing, like phasing was like phasing. Oh, let me explain phasing. phasing. Let me explain phasing, and then you explain where phasing came from. Oh yeah, you um, explain phasing. So phasing, <laughs> the idea of phasing is, or at least originally is a creature with phasing would be in turn one turn and then be out of, out, it'd be in exile for the other turn. So it would go back and forth between being on the battlefield and not being on the battlefield for a turn. And it would phase in and out at the beginning of your turn. Right. And it was a way to bring in big creatures without big math. Right. It was kind of interesting in, in also in gameplay. It's like, oh, I know my opponent is going to have their 8-8 eight, eight this turn and two turns, but they're not going to have it in the middle. And what can I kind of do? Um, but then it didn't work. Like, as we were 
developing phasing, we were also playing around with more enters the battlefield effects. Like enters the battlefield effects, and they, these really hit a high point in visions, right? Was felt like we were just it, it wasn't it wasn't the first set that had enters the battlefield. It was no, Bill. It was. It was. It was the first set that it entered was? the battlefield. Yes. Okay. Uh, visions. So <laughs> just so the audience knows, if you said something that the audience doesn't know. I should fill in here. Um, Mirage and Visions were basically Menagerie was kind of both of them put together, right? If, if they were designed together. Yes, they were. They were. Yes, they they were. So the Weatherlight, it's Mirage Visions Weatherlight, and Weatherlight was designed after the fact. Right. Um, but Mirage and Visions were were designed to get like Ice Age. Well, yeah, Mirage and Visions were designed together. Yeah, what what happened was this might be confusing you. Uh, Tempest independently did come in comes into battle without realizing you guys had done it and had done it independently. But you guys had done it got released before we released ours, and you guys made it before we made it because you made it earlier than we did. So we just didn't know you had done yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a pretty it was and and really there was there was no cards earlier than that that just didn't randomly have a win comes into play trigger. I don't believe so. There's four envisions, and I believe those are the those are the four that put at the time it was called um now it's called Enter the Battlefield. At the time it's called Comes Into Play. CIP was the name back then. Okay. Um but that's the one put that on the map. That I mean, maybe technically there was something that had did something, but as far as generating a magic effect, essentially, those were the first ones that did it. Yeah. And the the big thing with phasing is it just I mean, back then the magic rules weren't logical. And when you combine phasing and these illogical rules, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It was a nightmare for to play. Yeah, Mirage is pre sixth edition, so right. It, yes. Yeah. And we, you know, we we would we would have a rules committee and we'd make a ruling and it would seem really right, and then like three weeks later we'd have another issue and have a rules committee and it seemed right. And then you'd look and you're like, wow, both these rulings seem correct. But when you put them next to each other, they're the opposite <laughs> of what they, and it just didn't work. It was, it was, um, yeah, it, it was kind of crazy. But anyway, those were the, you know, it was an early set. Um, we, 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 we wanted just creature, we, we were very creature focused because Ice Age was so lacking of creatures and creatures are so important playing limited. You know, and it was really like I think it's you know it had a lot of firsts. As you said like visions had the first comes into comes into play creatures, and uh, Mirage was the first true block, right? Like Ice Age later added alliances, and I think they but but alliances you know, wasn't made to be part of Ice Age. Just so the audience understands, no, was, we at Wizards did that. It, the designers had no plan for that to be true. We later sort of said, oh, this right. is a continuation. But Mirage was the first. Right, Mirage is the first block. Um, I, 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 I do this thing I call the Ages of Magic, and it's the second age to me because uh, Mirage introduced blocks, it introduced limited, and you know, Mirage really was a big stepping up of a lot of technology behind the scenes. Yes, I mean it was it was innovative for its time, but now, like in prep for this, I looked back through some of the card finals, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Our design has, we have come a long way, Mark. We've come a long way. So here's one of my favorite. Uh, oh, actually, the well, one of the things that's funny when we look back is we were trying to make small incremental changes, which at the time were a big deal, right? Um, like we joke about Ice Age, but one of Ice Age's problems was there were just no creatures, and you literally won the game sometimes because you just had a creature and they didn't have a creature. And Mirage was said, "Hey, you know what? The game's about creatures. We should have lots of creatures." And uh, you know, Mirage really sort of. Um, oh. It's neat looking back. I mean, it's. I know that like, the, the Model T issue, like we look back at Model T and like look at a Ferrari, it feels like, wow, the Model T seems pretty ancient. But you you don't get to the Model T, you don't get to the Ferrari without the Model T being there first to sort of right. pave the way. Okay, so... We are Model T. Yeah. We're, um, so let me ask, the next question is, you guys did... Uh, so back in the day, the people who made the sets did come up with a story Later on, the creative team would make the story. But you guys did have a rough idea for a story, didn't you? We did. Do you, do you remember? Do you, I know it probably better than you do. It sounds like <laughs> you should tell it. You should. You should. You should tell it. So the, the I, I remember, like Mangara, right? That's the, 
Uh, so the, the, the main core of the story, I'll, I'll just get the high points here, is that there were these different wizards. There were three wizards that had basically a, a big fight between them. And um, there was Mangara, there was Jorel, and there was... Who's the bad one? Um, I'm blanking his name. He's the black... He's the black um, is it Kervik? Or my Kervik, yeah. Kervik, Kervik. So Kervik, Jarrell, and uh, Mangar, I think. And then Teferi has like plays a role in it, but doesn't want to get anything to do with them. Um, but there's basically a war between three different factions. Is kind of how, where it started. And there's this big story, and then basically Kervik betrays them because he's the he's the bad guy. And then Mangara gets imprisoned in the Amber Prison, and Jarrell and 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 the company and the Weatherlight have to break out uh, Mangara. We were told by the editors that there were no designers used to do anagrams of their names yeah. to put in the set. And we were told under no circumstances are you to put in an, an anagram. So we so Man, Mangar is an anagram of anagram. Yes. That was our thing. You guys did by the way, you did get an anagram. For all of you don't put an anagram in, you did get an anagram in. So let's talk about the history of Talimtor. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is crap. This is I don't. I'll tell a little bit of the story. Well, tell tell the, the um, PG version of the story. <laughs> Telemtor, Telemtor is an anagram of Mister Toilet, and that's because there was a great football player, um, named, nicknamed the Fridge, played on on uh, Chicago. Yeah, Perry was his last name. Uh, um, yeah, William Perry. He was yeah. nicknamed the Fridge. So one of the so one of our designers said, "That's cool. We should also we should all have a nickname after an appliance." And I said, "Okay, Mister Toilet." And he was like, "He was the only one nicknamed." <laughs> anyway, we put it in. So it was just, like it was kind of it was goofy times. I mean, it was more it, we weren't we weren't very professional, so I can say. But you know the you know it was um, back in the time like we didn't really know we were just. We designed Mirage when we weren't even sure that magic would be around when it came time to get the set published. Like, you had no idea. We had no idea. Now, you look back at it, you're just like, it seems absurd. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I mean, but, but magic wasn't even out yet. Like, no one, it's hard to predict no what one? happened with magic, right? That's right. Right. Magic hasn't been released, and you're going to produce a set that's going to come out two years later. Who knows? Who knows? So, do you have any other memories of Mirage? Thinking of like your elements of Mirage that you you were proud of, individual cards or anything, something that stands to mind? Yeah, well, I have. It's a weird card. I don't even. Remember. I'm bad with names, and I'm especially bad when the playtest name. But we had like, <clears throat> we had this four four. You'll know the card. It's okay. like it's a red. And blue four four that does as much damage to you as it deals. Yeah, hold on. I'm I'm pulling the card up so that I can read it to the audience. Hold on. Um, it is a four four. Let's see. I'm looking at the file right now. Um, blue and red. If not no, not frenetic or free. That's a two one. Uh, what is it? Four four. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm searching through the file trying to find the card. Um, it was you, go, okay. We'll talk about it. I'll find it when you talk about it. When you find it, uh, it was like it's this four four flyer that does as much damage, and people thought it was. I mean, it's not a good card. It was just a goofy card. And the story I remember is we convinced people in the office that weren't great magic players that it was like. All the Pro Tour players were going like were loving this card. It was like the card to victory, and they all would come back and be like, "I have no idea how this card works." Okay, so let's see. Uh, oh, okay, it's Ember Emberwild Caliph. So Emberwild Caliph, yes. two blue red, four four, summon Jin, uh, flying trample. Emberwild Caliph attacks each turn of Fable for each one damage. Uh, Emberwild Caliph successfully deals lose one life. Yeah, that, that is the card. I mean, I, I to be honest with you, Mark. I mean, this is like twenty five years ago. I to, I just remember 
the drafts and the creature about like to me the fun part of Mirage, we would draft mirage like every night we just go and we draft and we change cards and we draft again how did you and draft what draft did you guys use hmm? did you use rochester what how, how, how did you draft it what, we, what? no we did a booster draft. oh we did booster draft okay like yes before magic because richard and scaff had thought about this booster draft mm -hmm before magic was released and they showed us booster draft and we just loved it so we were yes we were we were booster drafting mirage cards before magic was released yeah people ask a lot about limited and like it it was part of magic the idea for magic very early on like right before it was released obviously um yeah not not so much, i mean i don't think so much with alpha but like with Mir like that's really where Mirage put its focus, and then I think after Mirage, like Mirage kind of put a stake in the ground, and every set since Mirage has just been better. It limited. Well, like we keep iter we keep point. iterating, right? So we, 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 like each set learns from the set before it and improves upon it. So right, but every set every set has been committed to limited. Oh yes, yes. Like, I mean, like before, like before Mirage, like. Try to play limited with legends. I mean, Holy it's moly. Like... <laughs> yeah, if if you get an enchantment out and it's not an enchant world, you have to go to rare to get rid of it. I mean, you can bounce it with boomerang, I guess. Yeah. But so, yeah. So I mean, you know, for us, it was like like a lot of what we did with design was focused on uh, limited tech. You know, it, it was really an ex. Uh, I, we were trying to produce the best repeatable fun limited experience that we could like that was really the effort of the set so you had the, the time you had the unique but, perspective that you worked on it before you came to wizards and then you also worked on it once you got to wizards so right I, in fact i was recruited by our good mutual friend Joel Mick to come and work on it at Wizards after I worked with Joel. Joel Joel was my partner, the 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 second lead designer of Mirage when we were in Philadelphia and then had joined Wizards as um I guess he was lead designer at the time, then became, you know, vice president of marketing and Joel recruited me to come and and lead the development of the set. I mean we were I mean, the boring stuff, but like we like we were all smart people, but like nobody knew how to like actual work in a real work environment. Um, so there were some struggles. I mean, there's a reason why the year before we only were able to get out like two sets, um, uh, Ice Age and and, uh, Al and Alliances took forever to publish. And so, Alliances didn't come out until the next year. Uh, Homelands can't, I guess. There was uh, yeah, Ice Age and Homelands came out, and I, it, alliances took a little while. Yeah, I was brought in as much for business as I was for design. Yeah, so I because brought... again, like we won as a player, it really like you know I remember talking with Joel. We were like, as a player, who wants to wait nine months for the next set? I mean, that's like <laughs> that's torture. So we were able to come in and then with Mirage and Visions, we set up the block. It was really fun to draft. And then, you know, Tempest came on. And it was another unique experience, which was really fun and had a block. And it, it re, you know, it really launched Magic uh, moving forward, right? What you, you call it like 2.0? Yeah, the, then, the sorry, Mirage, I, it's the second wave is what I call it. Sort of like the, the you know, yeah. um, that but, it was, yeah. a, it was a set that said, you know what, we're going to start doing things. We're going to have limited matter. We're going to have blocks matter. Like, it really, Magic started coming into its own as a little bit more organized in the early days. It was sort of all over the place. And I would say, like, with the outside influences, like, with up till then, like, the designer really led, like, the designers and the developers just did the same set. And while I led both, um... People like you and Mike Elliott and William Jockish and Henry Stern, we really had two separate teams. So you had this second voice come in. And I think Mirage is probably the first set that had significant changes 
from design to publication because we brought in that second team. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, it was the first set that had kind of a full development. I mean, there, there was some development before that, but it's the first set that had, when we think of a kind of a modern development, Mirage is probably the first set that had a modern development. Right, because a card had to be liked by both halves. Like before we used to get cards that would come in that were um, only liked by, I mean, if a designer liked it, they put their card through. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, I look back on very fondly and I'm very proud of it. Even though when I look at it, I'm like, well, it is the Model T. Well, I mean, it, it, look, it's not, for example, I did a, po I did a podcast uh, last week with, with Richard all about Tempest. And Tempest has a lot of the same okay. qualities of, hey, in its time, it was very innovative. It did things that we hadn't done before. But, you know, you look back now and like, okay, well, you know, it is a Model T. It's, it's, it's old and, but. Uh, the only thing you could see at the time is like Ice Age alliances at the time were sort of pushing um, constructed play um, a little bit unhealthy, and then Mirage overcorrected, and then Tempest overcorrected. Yeah. So back then we were doing the cycle like you would have one set that was a little too strong for constructed, followed by the next set which was a little too weak. Um, well, Mirage got the Mirage got the short end of the stick there. So w Wave Three is Invasion. That's when we started getting real development in. So. <laughs> A little more like okay. pro pro tour development and stuff started. Uh, and, and, I, mean, I worked on Invasion. You yeah. did, you did. You were one of the things I've always talked about is I think Invasion was the first time you were head designer, I believe. Um, and then with I I have it's funny um, some of it by choice and some of it by luck, but you know I I do you do you have uh, is way is uh, Shards of Alara another wave for you? I I, 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 I have to look at it. I remember there's a whole, there's like seven waves now. There's a whole bunch of them, but uh, yeah. Because I did Mirage, then I did Invasion, then I did Shards of Alara. So a lot of times there's like this, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to, magic needs a change. So I like go back, um, but I'm not designing any more sets. Yes, Alara well, was my last big one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, one of the things that's fun looking back at Mirage, I mean, I, I have fond memories of us sitting around, you know, uh, like developing Mirage. Um, in fact, my nickname comes from Mirage. So that the, we can tell that story. Is that where? Right. Yeah. Um, yes. The, yes. So do you want to tell how yeah, how, how how Maro came how the the name Maro came to be? Do you remember this? I mean, I, no. I, isn't it just from how we short names on the? You, on the server? Yeah, you figured out the shortest number of letters you had to type so you could email somebody. Cause, and oh. and M-A-R-O was the shortest you needed to get my name. That That's what you had learned to be able to type to get my name. So when I, I in the middle of, we we killed a card and I came up with a card. And so you just wrote Morrow on it because like I made it. And I don't think anybody thought that the name would stick, but that you put it on it and then it's some name kind of stuck, so... But we have. Back we have, then, I um, <laughs> here's another thing, and I don't even know what it was, but um, any one word piece of flavor text likely came from me. Oh, was it was catch you? <laughs> a lot of, I mean, I, so, and I can't even say on this, but yeah. you know, I would sit around and remember with Mike Ryan and yeah. you know, do a play test, and I'm not yeah. a great writer, <laughs> but every now and then I would like give the one word, and he'd be like, "Yeah, we're going to use that." Yeah, we did. We had a theme for a while where we every set had a one word piece of flavor text for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So you were you were very involved in that theme. <laughs> <laughs> so any, well, I'm, I'm, I'm almost to my desk here, so we need to wrap up soon. But uh, any final thoughts on Mirage? Looking back, twenty five plus years to your very first set. No, I, I said it had fond memories working with the developers. I, I want to, you know, and. Um, you know, it made me when I when I thought about the set, just sort of the the um, early people. Um, and I mentioned, you know, Mike Elliott, Henry Stern, William Jockish, of course, you and me, um, Jim Lynn, uh, Joel Mick, like, Scaff, a lot of good times. <laughs> hmm? Scaff, what? Scaff, Scaff, yeah, Scaff was there. No, Scaff was going off doing other things. I guess Jim was too. Um, 
but you know, I, you know, I really look at the, the, the fun times we had developing this cards and just how we would, you know, we, we would just like spend nights. I mean, we just, yeah, we were there. We just worked on those sets nonstop, you know, back, you know, we had four people. Yeah. Remember we had four people and they, they said like, do you think we have too many designers at one point? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You mentioned Henry, and Henry didn't even start till Tempest. So Henry wasn't even on Mirage. Mirage was me, you, William, and Mike. Oh, I thought Henry joined in early 96. H Henry's first thing, I think, was Tempest. I don't, I don't think Henry worked on Mirage. Um, oh. But, uh... He was early. Were yeah, I mean, he was, he was, yeah, he was early, but not quite as early as you and I. <laughs> Okay. Another thing is, another thing is hilarious. A quick story have, before we wrap we all, up. Like we, it was an very great. It was a very interesting time because, like, we were all hired within three months. Oh yes, yeah, you, you, right. You, I, and William started within a month of each other, I think, and then uh, Mike started like in December. So we started in October, and Mike started in December. But right, it was all within a very short time period. I started a week before you, so I got the computer. You did well. I Joel <laughs> saved the desk for you, so I didn't. I when I started Wizards, I didn't get a desk because we were moving soon. So they're like, eh, just use other people's desks till we move." You got a desk. I did not. The uh... Joel and I were buddies from before, so he looked out for me. Yeah, I think by the way, you technically started three weeks before I did because you started early October. And I started the end of October. I I started October fourth. Right, I started October thirtieth. So it was. Uh, you were at the beginning of the so month. I was, I was the end of the month. So you keep, by the way, this, this funny story for the people that know this. Bill has a little thing. He, uh, everybody who works at Wizards, and he's, uh, it was like a phone list from around that time. And whenever someone left, Bill would cross them off. Wyman. What? Warren Wyman kept it. And okay. when he left, he gave it to me. Uh, Warren Wyman was the head of security way, way, way back when. Uh, but anyway, it's a list that he crosses off whenever people are uh, leave. And I, I I got crossed off because I started three weeks after him, so I'm not I'm not before Bill, so I got crossed off early on. So there's only one person left. Is Charlie the only one ahead of you? Charlie Charlie's still ahead of me. So the, my my claim to fame is because when I when I got started, uh, one of my conditions for hiring was I wanted them to backdate my start date for all benefits. So on the computer, mm -hmm. I started January 1st, which is ahead of uh, Charlie started in February. I mean, not really. Obviously, I started in October. But uh, on the books, on the on, in, in the record, I started there. On the, books, on the books, you've been you've been with Wizards and Magic longer than me. But on my list, yes. I pulled out my black pen and yep. you're gone. I'm gone. That's true. <laughs> Anyway, it was great talking with you. This fun. I, I I really really enjoy talking old sets just because it's really fun to sort of go way back. So this this was fun, Bill. Yeah, thank you. So anyway, guys, to talk to you now. Um, I can see my desk, so we all know that this means this means it's the end of my drive to work. So instead of talking magic, it's time for me to be making magic. So again, thank you, Bill. Thank you. And I'll see all bye of you. Bye. I'll see all of you next time. Bye bye.